options to save 15% of your paycheck if you can afford to, or at least 10% if you're really strapped for cash. Once you start saving money, though, you have to know where to put it. And that's an issue that we don't spend nearly enough time talking about on Man Money. Let's say you're saving 15% of your income. Where should you invest that cash? Again, that's optimal. How much of it should go into a tax favor retirement account, like a 401k or an IRA? How much should go into a regular brokerage account? These are the kinds of questions I get all the time at Jim Cramer on Twitter and everywhere else, so let me tell you the answers. My rule of thumb here is to invest for retirement first, because a bet against retirement is really a bet against your own longevity. <laughs> for those of you who are still decades away from retirement age, I recommend putting half to two-thirds of your savings into retirement accounts like a 401k or an individual retirement account. Remember, these are tax-favored vehicles. Meaning you don't pay any income tax on the money you contribute to these accounts. You don't pay any taxes on your profits within the account. You only pay taxes once you decide to withdraw the money after you retire, at which point your withdrawals are taxed as ordinary income. I've told you about how to use these retirement accounts before, so I'm not going to belabor the point. So half to two-thirds of your savings should go to retirement. What about the rest of your money? That goes into what I call your discretionary or mad money account. That's just a normal brokerage account. I recommend using a cheap online broker with low commissions if you're going to go my way here. There are two reasons why you should have parallel accounts like this. The first is simply that the rise of 401k and IRA plans means that your retirement money gets all sorts of special tax benefits. You can't take advantage of those benefits with money that you intend to spend before retirement unless you're using a Roth IRA. But in the case of a Roth, your contributions are taxed going in. And while you're allowed to withdraw those contributions early without any penalty, you still get hit with a penalty for withdrawing any of your profits early. If you don't feel like you have enough capital to justify keeping two separate accounts, one for retirement, one for discretionary investing, then a Roth IRA is a good way to square that circle, especially since a Roth is more favorable to younger people with 